Work is done in faithfulness. I'm going to say that again too. That's another good one. All his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness. He loves justice. And the earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. So Lord, we come before you this morning and we rejoice in your presence. We bring you new songs. We bring you melodies on our instruments and with our voices. We rejoice in your presence today, Lord. We thank you that the earth is full of your steadfast love. Even just right now, you guys, in your, in your minds and hearts, would you just start to recall his faithfulness in your life? The situations that he's brought you out of, the ways that he's healed you, 
the things he's saved you from. Just take a second, recall his faithfulness. This says that all his work is done in faithfulness. So would you just do that? Thank you for your faithful hand in my life, God. For the way you've led me, guided me. I thank you that that is a testimony of every person in this room. And so, Lord, we come to you in praise and worship and gratitude this morning. In Jesus' name.
together as a church and we're gonna shake those chains off as Alicia sings this. The lyrics are, now I have a purpose, I have a destiny. You've made me for your glory. Okay. And then the next part, Alicia, what are the lyrics? So we're going to sing about how there are no more chains and how we're shaking them off and then we're going to be free together as a church, okay? We are part of the body of Christ, amen? Amen, let's do this together. Who the sun sets free is free.
about the goodness in your life. He's been so faithful, even in the darkest times and even in the trials when we felt like we need to give up or we felt defeated. He's still there. He still brings the joy. He still brings the goodness in our life. So as you're singing about his goodness, I want you to think about how it actually is running after you.
Just keep waiting on the Lord. If this is new or uncomfortable, not having words on the screen, what, what's happening right now is, is the Lord is being enthroned upon our praises. You know, it, it says in, in the Psalms that he's enthroned upon the praises of, of Israel. And as we were lifting him up, he was, he was coming, he's, he's coming, he's here, and he's dwelling among us. And in Psalms 27, this was the heart of David, was that one thing I ask, this is what I seek, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted of the enemies who surround me. And at his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. <laughs> I will sing and make music to the Lord. God, this is what we're doing. We're seeking your face right now. We're gazing upon your beauty. We are dwelling with you as you dwell with us. And God, right now we lift you up. We sing joyfully. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for, for coming to meet with us. We thank you for your goodness. So just, just continue to put a song of thanksgiving and joy on your lips.
we follow that up before we jump into uh, into a further expression of our worship of God through our tithes and offering um, we just want to pray over anyone and this is I'm included in this too who's just struggling to feel the joy of the Lord the beautiful thing is the joy of the Lord goes beyond a feeling. The joy of the Lord and our happiness isn't just the truth of who He is. So if you're not feeling it, that's okay. But let's pray over you. I wanna pray over you. We wanna agree together as a family for you. Um, so just bow your heads with me. Let, let's go after this. Father, we're so grateful that whether our souls and our spirits are, are feeling the joy, the truth is that you are good. You're stable, you're sufficient. You restore things, you overcome things, Father. So I pray over anyone in this room who isn't feeling the joy, that they would just rest upon your truth. Holy Spirit, that you would 
ignite their hearts and touch them only in the way that you can touch them, that you would revive them, that you would bring something new into their hearts and into their minds. So we just pray joy and peace that transcends understanding over, over all of us in this room, Father. We're so grateful that you transcend feelings and that you are true and you are faithful and you are forever. So we just declare and we honor and thank you, Lord. Amen. So let's stay in this place of worship. It doesn't end when the band leaves. Thank you, guys. And it doesn't end or shift when Nate comes up and, and shares the word. This is all an extension of our worship and our glory and our honor to the Lord. Um, if you want to give to Burning Hearts, we'd be grateful. There's a couple ways you can do that. You can text to the number on the screen there. You can give online. And you can give in the two black boxes in the back. Um, thank you for pouring into this ministry. Those of you who call Burning Hearts your home, we're so excited to be impacting God's kingdom through your giving. Um, so thank you. And this morning we have the privilege of hearing from some special guests, um, some guests to our family and, and all their old friends. So I want to invite the Seeds of Hope team up to share with us uh, their incredible ministry. So welcome them up as they come up here. Good morning. Hey, my name is Blair Hill. This is my wife, Jody Hill, and we are evangelists. We are prophetic evangelists, and we are with an organization called Destiny Outreach Mission Base that's based out of, no, not California, Atlanta, Georgia. It's based out of uh, Dilworth, Minnesota, the greater Fargo-Moorhead area. And our vision is to equip and train last day's evangelists to be sent into the Fargo-Moorhead area. That is our heart, to see an army of evangelists, and we brought some of them with us today that we're working with, and we run the Seeds of Hope Community Food Pantry, which is, thank you for one person that has been there for food. You'll find out how much food we're giving out. But Seeds of Hope is a ministry to connect the people who are lost in the world and bring them over into salvation. The Seeds of Hope is our mission base and we train missionaries. So if you want to volunteer, we need your help distributing food and doing evangelism. And we are training uh, latter rain, last days, prophetic evangelists. So if you have a call of evangelist on your life, you come and talk to us. We'll provide some uh, equipping and training. And we're talking about the um, seeds of hope, um, you know, the food pantry. Um, yes, there's, look at, there's somebody being baptized. Who is that? <laughs> um, uh, so we're, we are local, um, you know, um, uh, not to say that, you know, we don't need people going into the rest of the world, but, you know, um, the, the scripture that God has given us, and I'm sorry, but I'm a preacher, so I have to have my Bible open here. Um, uh, I'm not going to preach. Sorry, I'm not taking over. <laughs> the scripture that that really speaks to to um, what we do here in the re and kind of our our mission um, statement, I guess, is um, uh, found in um, Matthew twenty five verses thirty one through forty six. And if you want to, you can go there sometime and read that um, on your own. I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but um, this is where um, you know Jesus. Um, you know, takes the sheep and the goats out of the pasture and says, okay, now we're going to divide you up. Sheep on one side, um, uh, uh, um, goats on the other side. And, um, and this is where he talks about, um, you know, uh, what we're supposed to be doing. And he says, um, when you saw some, when you saw the hungry, you saw me hungry, you fed me. When you saw me thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When, you, when I was a stranger, you invited me in. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was sick, you cared for me. And when I was uh, in prison, you visited me. 
And, Jesus, and, and so Jesus said this to the sheep, and the sheep said, well, when did that ever happen? I, I don't remember. All. He said, when you've done it to the least of these, you've done it to me. And so one of the things, now he didn't mean the least of these like he was saying that these people are less than you, okay? I want you to be very clear on that. What, what he's saying is that in society, right, people, other people think that these people are less than. I don't think they're less than because, see, that's me. See, when we're feeding people who society has said, oh, you're less than, Jesus said, no, you're feeding me. We're feeding Jesus. We're clothing Jesus. We're inviting him into our homes. We're, we're you know, we're, so that's, that is the purpose of what we're doing, and that is um, uh, why we do what we do. So um, I just wanted to share that. Um, and he said, when you've done it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. Thanks, Jody. My name is Nikki, and so what Jody's basically saying is God calls us to serve. The reason I wanted to get involved in this ministry and serve is because it's super different than any other food pantry in the area. It's not a social service agency. It is a ministry. We don't just hand these people a box of food. We are interacting with them. We're giving them a little piece of, of dignity back, you know, um, and so I know there's been times where I drive from Georgetown, okay? And I'm tired, and I'd really rather just be on my couch snuggling with my dogs. But by the time I get done helping at Seeds, I'm so filled with the Holy Spirit. Like, I'm just, I'm a whole different person, you know? So, um, yeah. I'm Carol, and I'm one of the volunteers. And it's just been a tremendous experience. Now, I just moved to Fargo back in September, and I knew the Seeds of Hope was kind of in the making, and I've known Jody for over 40 years, so we were kids, we were kids, and so I knew it was in the making, but little did I know it was like starting when I moved here, and I knew that was God's plan, and I knew that was calling to me. And it was just a grateful experience to, to see these people come. And, you know, they're very timid when they first come in. But when they leave, they are so grateful and so just extreme grateful for, for us to be there for them. And it's just, it, it's very well, a warm feeling over us and how impact we're making just in this community. And that's what we need. It doesn't have to be missionaries in another country. Well, we can be missionaries in our own area. Absolutely. And I just feel like Seeds of Hope is in the making of a ministry. And I'm just grateful to be a part of it. I'm Danny. Um, I intern for Jody and Blair, and I do administration and statistics for uh, the Seeds of Hope. Um, we have, on average, of those that we serve, 30 to 60 families that come in every single week. Um, we hand out about 2,000 pounds of food every single week. Um, <laughs> 2,000 pounds is about the size of a hippo. Um, <laughs> And those numbers are growing. We have um, more and more people coming in every single week. Um, and so what we are asking is for a partnership for um, being able to continue to serve the community um, and being able to um, continue to grow in our ministry. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is JD. I trust that you all can see me. I can't really see you, but I heard some clapping, so I'm going to go ahead and talk. Uh, so Blair has asked me to serve as the administrator at Seeds of Hope. Uh, I do some of the official work. I run uh, the Instagram page, and I've uh, been writing some grants. Thus far, uh, the state has not seen it fit to give us any grant money. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact that we proudly and boldly proclaim Jesus. Because at Seeds of Hope, it's all about local impact local impact. So the Fargo, Moorhead area, Dilworth, Cass County, Clay County, you know, I said earlier this morning, everyone's heard of shop local. Well, I'm here to say we need to minister local because this is where the Lord has planted us. And the harvest is here just like it's anywhere else. 
So why are we doing what we're doing to impact the local area? Well, it's because if we're going to reach these people with Jesus, we need to build a relationship. We need to build trust. We need to provide them with something so that they think of us as a safe place because we are a safe place. You know, when Jesus was sitting on the banks of the Galilee and speaking to Peter, he asked Peter three times, do you love me? And Peter said, well, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus didn't say, then I want you to go on TV with big hair and ask everyone for money, or I want you to run all over the place and do this and that. He simply looked him in the eye and he said, then feed my sheep. And that's what we're doing. And I've seen people's lives changed. There's a young man who's reading his Bible and has been talking to me, and he's asked the Lord into his heart. There are people whose lives are being changed by a simple, humble food pantry. And the best part of that whole story is that all of us, every one of us in this room, can be a part of that. Because in addition to having a local impact, in addition to feeding his sheep, we can all collaborate. And that collaboration takes part in three ways. The first part is by spreading the word, which is what we're doing up here today, but you can be a part of that too. Tell others about what we're doing. The second part of that is by praying for us. We are encroaching upon the enemy's territory, and he doesn't like it. <clears throat> Our food pantry is positioned right between a couple bars there in Dilworth, and the enemy doesn't appreciate it. But you know what? Before it was his territory, it was the territory of the living God given to Adam, and we are taking it back. And the third thing that all of us can do is support, not only with prayer, but also with volunteerism and, frankly, with finances. Because we get a lot of food from Great Plains and other places, and that's wonderful. But we got to pay rent for the place. We got to keep the lights on, things like that. And honestly, <laughs> we need help. So we're here today to say we are making a local impact, which you can also do. The Lord said to feed his sheep, which all of us can do. And finally, we can all spread the word, pray for this ministry, and contribute to it. All right, thank you. <laughs> Peace, man. <laughs> thank you. We'll be in the back after the service. You'd like to talk to us and uh, ask some questions of us. Thank you, Pastor Nate. Awesome. Thank you, Blair and Jody and Seeds of Hope. Appreciate what you guys pour in to our community. And you've got opportunities um, to, to give into local missions and, and supporting Seeds of Hope. And then also after service today, if you can't smell it yet, there's a, there's a, um, a meal to support the Reach Chicago missions trip. Um, that our youth do during the summer. And so I encourage you to stay after and, and sow into that as well. Um, good morning. My name is Nate. I'm one of the pastors here at Burning Hearts Church. And if you're visiting with us this morning, we're just so thankful that you came. I see a lot of new faces out here today. And um, if you are looking for a place to get, to get connected, to find a church home, we would love to connect with you. You can fill out a welcome card in one of the seat backs in front of you, or you can hopefully scan one of the codes. And this is just so we can reach out. We can let you know different things happening at church that you can become a part of, get you involved with a, a life group, um, and, and the different ministries that we have going on. Um, I want to share some announcements with you. First off, we have a new class coming up on Tuesday nights, and it's called our Freedom Class. And so um, actually, just a couple weeks ago, we finished uh, Focus, one of our Focus classes, and, and Focus is, is diving deeper into different um, topics, different things that, that are part of our, our walk as believers in Christ. Uh, foundations is, is the basic foundations, and Freedom is, is a new class that we've been developing that, that talks about um, how, how to walk in freedom as a follower of Christ. When, when Jesus came onto the scene, started his ministry in Luke chapter four, he, he unrolled the scroll from Isaiah and he said, I, I've come to bring freedom to the captives. And, and so we're gonna talk about um, how, how to gain freedom. Uh, what, the, the reality of the, the spiritual battle that we're in. We'll, we'll talk about wholeness in, in Christ, it's salvation meaning uh, not only eternal life, but um, physical healing and e emotional healing and freedom. So I'd invite you to come to that. It's open to anyone April 16th at 7 p.m. 
Uh, we have our women's conference coming up this next weekend. And so if you haven't registered for that and you still want to come, you can go to the website. There's a, a link there. And uh, Sean and Krista Smith will be ministering with us, and they will also be here for our Sunday services, so you don't, you don't want to miss that. Invite a friend and uh, uh, come to that. Uh, we also, that same weekend on Sunday evening, we have a men's event, and so the, the men that have been taking care of the, the kids all weekend so the ladies can go to the retreat can have a little outing on Sunday evening. So at 6 p.m., I'm going to go to Sweet Shots, and so if you're into golf, or even if you're not into golf, you can come. It's, it's fun. I did it a few weeks ago, and I haven't golfed for years, and it, it was just fun. So sign up in the, in the lobby out there. Uh, we'll determine the cost and all that afterwards. But um, just encourage you just to, to fellowship with one another in that. And then also, if you came in early, you probably saw by our hospitality um, our coffee and all that, we have started selling merchandise, shirts and, and hoodies, and we have a hat coming soon. You can see the prices up there. Um, we, we, we're kind of limited on sizes right now, so if there's something that you want and we don't have the size, we'll, we'll take that down. And, and I just want you to know our heart behind this. Um, as, as we were deciding to do this, I was praying into it, and I kind of had these visions of Jesus coming in and flipping over our table in the, in the lobby there because we're selling stuff, right? And, and, and uh, no, I, ser- I seriously prayed through this, and, and, it, and the Lord just gave me peace. Like, we are, we're, not, we're not making any money off of this, and if, if we start to do that, it's gonna go to missions, and, and it's not anything that you have to do to worship like the like the people were actually putting restraint on, on um, the worshipers uh, in the temple. And, and our heart is just for you to belong, to, to, to get that sense of family by, by offering merchandise and, and, and nothing else. And it's it just fun. So that's our heart behind it. So um, check that out. Next Sunday in between services, we'll, we'll have that available. And so... Today, I want to launch into a message, and <laughs> this is really interesting with what happened in worship, where we're going with the, the word uh, this morning. Um, we're going to talk about fear of the Lord, and, and it's interesting. A, a scripture that I'll share at the end comes from Isaiah chapter 11, and, and it was the Holy Spirit resting upon Jesus, and the last, the last um, expression of the Holy Spirit was that, that he delights in the fear of the Lord. And, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this today, but there is a joy that we actually have in fear, fearing God, a, a healthy fear of God. And, and in some ways, I feel like we kind of experience that today. And my prayer is that we will experience that even more. And, and I want to share that everything that, that I'm sharing with you today has been speaking to me personally, like I'm held accountable to this because everything that I share, I, I want it to be in my heart before I even um, share it with you. And so if you, if you just close your, your eyes for a second, bow your heads, fix your eyes on Jesus. Lord, we, we open our hearts to you today. We ask that you would speak through your word. We thank you that it's living and it's active and it's, it's sharper than a, a two-edged sword. And I pray that it would penetrate our hearts today, God. And any, any, um, any defense that we have up, <laughs> Lord, I, I pray that it would be torn down. And God, that we would receive. And not only that we would hear the word, that we, but that we would be transformed by it today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Before I launched into this, I just felt something as we were worshiping and especially when we were singing um, the goodness of God. I feel like the, the Lord is saying for some of you today that this, today is an, uh, a day of um, Ebenezer. If you're familiar in, uh, in 1 Samuel 7, when Samuel and, uh, defeated the, the Philistines, they set up this rock and they called it Ebenezer, and it, it was, basically it means like the Lord is my help, the Lord helps me. And it was to be just like when the, the Israelites crossed over the Jordan and they set up the, 
the 12 stones of remembrance. It was to be a, a, remem- a, a memory of God's help for them. And, and, and I feel like for some of you, this, this, this moment, this service, that, that, the God, that God is reminding you that he is your help. And this is an Ebenezer moment for some of you. So if that's you, just, just receive that right now. God is your help. He never leaves you nor forsakes you. And in those moments when you've been, you feel like you've been walking through the valley of the shadow of death, he, he's there. He, he comforts you. His, his rod and his staff are, are with you. So Lord, I just bless those that are in that place. And Lord, I pray that today would be a remembrance when, when in the past it was always looking to what, what failed, what went wrong. And today that there would be a shift that we always look to what, where you delivered us, where you helped us, where you saved us, where you provided for us, where you healed us. In Jesus' name, amen. So the fear of God is something that we have, I think, lost in, in today's Christianity a little bit. And, and I think it's, it, that's happened because of a few things. One of the things that I think has happened that as we've, um, as we've pursued the Lord and we've tried to cast off everything that's tradition and religion and, and all of that stuff, which is a noble quest, though there is something really powerful about tradition in, in, in that process, I think we've, we've kind of lost the fear of the Lord in a way. And, and the fear of the Lord is, is so important. We, we talk about identity. I, I love to share on our identity in Christ, what Jesus has paid for, how we relate to the Father as sons and daughters, how we're the bride of Christ, all those things. But if we take that to this extreme and don't understand uh, the, the fear of the Lord, it, it, it's a problem. God, God is our father. He's our friend. He's our bridegroom. But we need to approach him with awe and reverence because he is God. And, and, and the, the fear of the Lord is so relevant for us today. In our society, we need it. But in our church, we need it even more. <laughs> We've turned church that happens on our ter- into something that happens on our terms we, we have control, we, we set up systems and, and all these things, and we have preferences about our songs and our sounds and, and our production, and, 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 and the Lord honors when we're gathered in his name. When two or three are gathered, he is there in their midst, right? We, we know biblically that when we come seeking him and gathering together, he shows up, but he has preferences. Read the book of Levit- Leviticus, he has preferences. This was the way that the priesthood was to approach the Lord when offering sacrifices, which was, that was worship in their day. And the Lord had preferences in the way it was to be done. And I want to read a story from Leviticus chapter 10, starting in verse 1. And this is talking about Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu. Now Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took their respective fire pans, and after putting fire in them, placed incense on it and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. And fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, it is what the Lord spoke, saying, by those who come near me, I will be treated as holy. And before all the people, I will be honored. So Aaron, therefore, kept silent. Think about that for a moment. It's sobering. Nadab and Abihu offered a strange fire. They approached God in a way that he had not desired or designed or designated because he is holy. He is other than, and they were consumed and I say this, this truth in love, that we need to examine ourselves personally and, and corporately. Are we, are we offering a strange fire before the Lord? 
Are we offering a strange fire before the Lord? And just in case you're thinking, well, this is the Old Testament, Nate. What about you know, Jesus and the cross and all that? Well, Hebrews 12, 28 and 29 says, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. The writer of Hebrews, I believe, wrote that scripture thinking about what happened in, to Nadab and Abihu. And First Peter 2 says that we are living stones and we're being built into a spiritual house to be a, royal, or a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. We are a priesthood now, just like there was the Old Testament priesthood. And, and, and we, need to, we need to come to the, the Lord and worship and bring our offerings <laughs> in a way that's pleasing to him. <laughs> There's the example of Ananias and Sapphira, that, that scripture that we never want to talk about, right, in the New Testament. And I believe that that's a parallel to Nadab and Abihu and how they, their offering, their offering of their land was impure. And it, the Lord didn't accept it. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 28, do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. <laughs> He's saying, fear the Lord. We need to worship God with reverence and with awe. And we need to approach him on his terms and offer ourselves as it says in Romans 12, 1, as living sacrifices, for this is our, our, our spiritual, it's a, our pleasing and spiritual act of worship. And, and I want to be clear. <laughs> my, my point in sharing these scriptures is not, well, God kills people, right? Don't take that from this message, right? He, he, <laughs> he is merciful. He is loving. He is compassion. His mercy triumphs over judgment, it says in the word. But I think that we can sometimes overemphasize the love of God without recognizing the fear of God. They need to be held in, in balance with one another. And if we overemphasize one, we, we are offering a strange fire. The strange fire can be in the way that we worship. It can be because we start calling things that are sin not sin so we can keep on doing them. It can be idolatry. It can be putting things before the Lord. It can be in the way that we treat one another. We need the fear of the Lord. We need it as we gather here. We need it in our homes, in our families, in our schools, in our workplaces. And so I want to talk a little bit about the fear of the Lord, what it means. And I, I, the, the fear of the Lord is good. <laughs> I, if, you, if you take one thing from this message, understand this. The fear of the Lord is good, and we need it. We want it. We need to, des to desire it. And we generally think of fear as bad, right? Because there are so many fears running rampant in our society today. There's, there's fear of failure. There's, there's fear of what other people think. There's fear of the unknown. There's, there's fear of death. There's fear of all, all these things. There's irrational fears uh, as well. But I want to tell you that fear in its pure form, the emotion of, pure, of fear that we experience is a gift from God because it preserves our life. If any of you have been in like a life or death kind of situation, probably most of you have if you've driven before, and, 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 and all of a sudden that, you know, that adrenaline rush and that fear comes upon you and it, and it heightens your awareness and it gives you the ability to do what you need to do to focus to get through that situation, right? The fear, that fear actually preserves your life and the fear of the Lord is the same. The fear of the Lord preserves life. It gives us life. It, it brings freedom. We'll talk about that in a moment. And, and like I said at the beginning, it, it, there's joy in fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord, in simple terms, 
in the way that we relate to him is approaching God on his terms, is acting out of reverence and awe because he is worthy of it. If you guys have read Revelation 5, it, you know, there's this, this, this worship song going on in heaven in, in John's vision, all blessing and honor and glory and power belong to him. Fear of the Lord is recognizing that. It's recognizing his holiness, really. There's none like our God. He is creator. He is above all things. He is all-powerful. He is majestic. He is beautiful. He is, he is more than we... I, I even have words to describe. Nothing compares to him, and we need to approach him in a way that he is worthy of. So that's fear in the, of the Lord and how we relate to God, but fear of the Lord also has to affect how we relate to one another, how we, how we conduct ourselves. Fear of the Lord is synonymous in many scriptures with right living, righteous living. So fear of the Lord, and, and I had this, this thought as I was pondering this, is, is that fear of the Lord affects our, our vertical relationship with the Lord, but it also affects our horizontal relationships. And fear of the Lord, really, I believe, is the, actually the, the, the door that opens us to, to, to follow the, the two great commandments that Jesus said, to love the Lord with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and as, all your strength and to love your neighbor as um, yourself. We can only do that well if we fear the Lord. Perfect love casts out fear, but not fear of the Lord. I want to look at a few things that actually, you could call them benefits, a fear of the Lord. That's maybe not the best word. They're just things that, that flow out of fear of the Lord. Let's go to Psalm 33. And Sabrina read the beginning of this psalm when we opened this morning. And, and this psalm actually talks quite a bit about fear of the Lord. And in verse 8, it says, this, this declaration, let all the earth fear the Lord, right? This is his desire. <laughs> let all the people of the world revere him. So it's equating fear to, to awe and reverence. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. So this is, this is where we understand that fear is reverence for a creator God. But if we go down to verses 18 and 19, it says something interesting. But the eyes of the Lord, so he is watching, his eye is on those who fear him, who revere him, and, and on those whose hope is on, in his unfailing love to deliver them from death and to keep them alive in famine. Fear of the Lord is, is a, a protection for us. And not only is, is it a physical protection, it's a, it's a spiritual protection. As we fear the Lord, as things come into our lives, instead, uh, fear of the Lord actually leads us to him to, to pray instead of trying to figure things out on our own, and, and the Lord is, is watching, this, this scripture says, he's, he's watching for those who fear him, and, he, and he's ready to, it's almost like, think about him as a, a cat ready to pounce to rescue, right? He's watching for those who fear him. Psalm 34, 7 through 14 says, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. Again, that, that surrounding, that, that covering, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. It's that provision again. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it, pursue it. And so the end of this passage is telling us that that fear of the Lord is in that 
in that right living, in that righteous living. But earlier on, it, it, it again reinforces is that that fear of the Lord is actually our protection. It's all, actually our provision in fear of the Lord. And, and fear of the Lord is, so often we think of, of fear of God as, as oh, I'm so afraid, I'm, I'm running away. But fear of the Lord is actually running to him. You know, in, in verse, um, verse 9, fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him not, lack nothing. That's paralleled with verse 10, the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. So fear of the Lord is seeking the Lord. And don't take this as, as a formula, right? God, if, you've, if you've been walking with the Lord for a while, you realize that God doesn't work in formulas, right? If we, it, he doesn't, you know, if we can somehow work up fear of the Lord, then we'll get everything we need, maybe even the things we want. That's, that's not what this is talking about. This is talking about that the Lord covers and protects those who fear him. Our covering, our, our, our refuge, our shelter is in him. As I was thinking about this, I was thinking about Adam and Eve in the garden and how they disobeyed and in that act of disobedience exchanged fear of the Lord, which was their covering. They had no clothing on. Fear of the Lord was their covering and they exchanged it for an inferior fear, fear of man, which caused them to cover themselves with, with leaves. Fear of the Lord is to be our covering. Some other things that, that are found in fear of the Lord, it, if you've read Proverbs before, you, you'll know this. Proverbs 1.7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, and fools, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And Proverbs 9.10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Our knowledge of God, a, a complete, uh, we can never have a complete understanding of God, but it, uh, our knowledge of God, you know, we, we can receive from reading the word, we can receive, there's all kinds of amazing books out there, but it doesn't come from acquiring information or even from experience. It has to be built on the fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord has to be the foundation of our knowledge of God or else it, it will crumble. It will crumble. That, I mean, think about even biblical scholars and all those people that get so puffed up with, with knowledge and if they don't have fear of the Lord, they, they, many of them walk away from him. Wisdom, on the other hand, is knowing how to apply knowledge. We've defined it before as the ability to make Godly choices, this is what wisdom is. And wisdom in that recognizes the, that God is above all, that he is supreme. And, and, and every situation bows to him. This is wisdom in the fear of the Lord. And worldly knowledge leads to, like I just said, pride. It, it can lead to emptiness. And worldly, worldly wisdom will we'll prove to be foolish, right? Paul tells us that in 1 Corinthians 3. But when we seek the fear of the Lord, even the, the person who knows nothing, even the person who's been a believer for, for a day, if they fear the Lord, the most profound things can come out of their mouth and through their life because they fear him. The mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians 3, I believe is accessed through the fear of the Lord. So how do we know that we are walking in fear of the Lord? I believe one of the, the main things, the main indicators of our fear of God is how obedient we are in day-to-day -day life. Abraham, most of you know the story of Abraham, right? He was asked to sacrifice, he was given a promise, first of all, 
that he would have numerous descendants, right? That a nation would come from his line. And he had one son, and he, he was asked to sacrifice this son. So he goes up the mountain, lays his son on the altar. He's bound up, and he's about to take a knife and kill him, and God stops him. And God says this in, in Genesis 22, do not lay a hand on the boy. He said, do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld me withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham's fear of God was demonstrated in his obedience to God's word. This is how we walk in the fear of the Lord outside of these walls. As I was sharing at the beginning, the the fear of the Lord is demonstrated in the way that we worship. And and when, I, when I'm talking about that, I don't mean you have to be the most expressive, exuberant worshiper. You don't have to be jumping all over. The, that's great if, if that's your, the way that you worship. I love that. But we need to be doing it out of a, a heart of reverence and, and awe for God. And if we come into this place and we, we stay disengaged if we, we are wondering when this is going to be over so we can get on with the service and we can get home, or if we are wanting to go out and get more coffee or we're chatting with our neighbor or we're making comments about the worship team or the pastors or our neighbors or, or whatever it is, that is offering a strange fire before the Lord. We all have to fight distraction when we come into this place to worship, and I understand that. And I... I have grace for it, and I know the Lord has grace for it. Some, you know, we have kids in here. We, we have things going in our lives that are really hard. And I believe the Lord, just like in Luke chapter 7, when the woman brought her tears before the Lord to give that, that offering, the, the alabaster jar broken open on Jesus, but she gave him her tears he wants us to bring those things, those things can, that can distract us, our, our pain before him and offer them to him. And he will take them and he will give you what you need. But there is no place for disinterest or disdain for worship in a, in a royal priesthood. So our fear of the Lord is demonstrated in how we respond when he shows up. Just a, just a remembrance this last fall. We had a, a moment in our joyful house of prayer on a Wednesday where the Lord showed up in a unique way. And Sabrina and uh, Ivan, if you know him, were, were worshiping and praying what we do at, at J-Hop. And, and there was something unique. You could, uh, you could almost like there was this expectation. And, and I, f- I just felt this urge to to go up on the stage with him and start playing a drum, which is not something normally that we do. That's not like normal, right? But then something happened. There was this shift and I was like, I need to stop playing and I need to get off of this stage. And so I did that and I, 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 I think knelt down or laid down and then everybody else in the room was feeling the same thing and they were laying prostrate and crying out to the Lord and, and Sabrina uh, propped a chair on the pedal of the keyboard so that a pad would just keep playing and we stayed there for over an hour, I think, and, and the glory of the Lord came. And if you don't know what that, <laughs> what that means, it's like God showed up. His, it was so tangible, like God is here. We don't know what to do. And, and, and our fear, like our response out of fear of the Lord was just to, 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 to prostrate ourselves, to bow before him. This is the fear of the Lord. And, and when his presence comes, we need to respond in, in that way. And I feel like that a key to, to stewarding the presence of God, which we love here, Pursue God's presence, right? The, the tangible, I say manifestation, that sounds like a big word, right? Like God's showing up. And, and most of you have, have felt that in some way or another. When God shows up, the way that we steward that, the way that we continue in that is to operate in fear of the Lord. If we want revival, we need the fear of the Lord. We need to be asking for the fear of the Lord. 
So I wanna challenge you, Laura, you can come up. I wanna challenge you to, to cultivate the fear of the Lord in your personal life, in your families. And it's not something that you can make up, right? It comes from within you. It's, it comes from humility. It comes from bowing before the Lord, actually in your heart all the time, sometimes physically, but all the time in your heart and recognizing who he is. It comes from eliminating distraction. It comes from eliminating selfish ambition and pride and looking to him. And it comes from asking and this was a revelation to me. I, I heard this this last week. Someone was asking uh, a, a pastor, like, well, how do you get the fear of the Lord? And he said, ask for it and believe that you'll receive it. And so that's my encouragement today is ask for it and believe that you will receive it because you, you need it, you want it, and he actually desires to give it to us more than we even want it. He answers those kinds of prayers. And Jesus walked in fear of the Lord more than any of us ever will. <laughs> I believe that Jesus was, he was compelled by love to go to the cross, but he was also compelled by fear of the Lord. I believe that fear of the Lord is what drove him to, to be able to confront the the religious and political systems of his day. I shared this at the beginning, but I want to close with Isaiah 11. And this is Isaiah's prophecy over Jesus. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. Jesus delights in the fear of the Lord. And I believe, like we've been talking about, fear of the Lord is one of the most needed aspects of the moving of the Holy Spirit in the church today. Fear of the Lord, believe it or not, will set you free. There's freedom in fear of God, not anything else. Because freedom comes in fearing, when, when we fear God, all those other fears, fear of man, fear of failure, all of those things bow to the fear of God. And we find freedom in fearing him. Fearing him means we trust him. Fearing him means we love him. Fearing him means we walk in holiness before him because he is holy. I believe that today is a day for us to experience the, the fear of God in, in greater measure. For some of you, it might be for the first time. For some of you, it might be some places in your, in your heart where you put, put walls up. I believe that, that right now, Right now, he wants to return you to the fear of the Lord and, and a healthy fear of the Lord, not the kind of fear of the Lord that, that means, oh, God is, God is scary and I don't want anything to do with him. No, God is, <laughs> God is, I want everything to do with God. That's what the fear of God will lead you to. I want everything to do with him. So if you would stand up for a moment. Close your eyes. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Before we pray over this, this fear of the Lord, I, I just want to pray in this place. <laughs> I just shared a little bit about Jesus. Jesus was... The Son of God, fully God, fully man, he came down to earth and willingly gave his life. He willingly suffered and, 
and was humiliated on the cross. He, was, he bled and he died and his body was broken so that the curse of sin could be broken off of our lives and that death would no longer have a hold of us, that we could have eternal life with him, that we could have wholeness, that we could have freedom, that we could have healing, that we could have uh, deliverance. This, this is what, what Jesus <laughs> offers to us but we need to respond by, by repenting and confessing that he is Lord. So if you're, you're in this place and you haven't done that, and, and, and believe me, it, it, it's costly, but the reward is everything because the reward is him. The reward is eternal life. The reward is life and life abundant. The reward is relationship with him, that, that you are a son and a, and a daughter that, that can hear his voice. There is so much. So if you're in this place and you don't know Jesus like that, or if you've run away from him with all our eyes closed, would you just wave a hand at me? Because I want to pray over you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for those hands. Thank you, Lord. If you would all just pray in your heart, and you don't have to repeat exactly what I say, but just something to this effect. That, Lord, I have... I've fallen short, I've, I've sinned. And right now, I ask that you, that you take these sins away and that you wash me as white as snow by your blood. I believe that, you, that in your death, there is forgiveness of sins and in your death, there is eternal life and in your death and resurrection, <laughs> I have life. So I believe that you've been raised from the dead and I confess you as Lord and I surrender all to you. Show me your love for me and I love you. Thank you, Jesus. If you, if you prayed that prayer, especially if it was for the first time, we would love to pray with you afterwards. We'll have a prayer team. But right now, I just want to open up the opportunity. We all need the fear of the Lord in greater measure in our lives. And so I want to open up the altar right now just for you to come and seek the Lord, to ask him for that, to, if there's anything you need to repent of, pride, whatever, to receive, that the altar is open now, and, and, and I just invite you to come forward. There's no, there's no pressure, and if you, if you don't feel that conviction on your heart, I, I want you to, to pray for others in this room. I want you to stay engaged with the Lord right now. I'm going to uh, give you a couple more moments just if you want to come forward. The altar is open, and I want to pray with, with you. as they are asking 
as they are seeking, as they are knocking, God, I pray that you would, you would answer, that they would find, that the door would be opened to them into a greater measure of, of fear of the Lord. God, I pray that that fear of the Lord would, would be their covering in the name of Jesus. I pray that obedience would spring out of their life, God, that it would be, it would be so timely, God, and that you would amaze them by the things that, that you do through them because of, of their obedience to you. And Father, I just pray if there's, there's anything that's been hindering them, God, just that we would repent together, that we would confess and we say, Lord, we are sorry. And right now we turn to you. We turn to you. We turn to you. We repent. And we say, we cover us by your blood. Cover us by your blood. Wash us right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. team if you would come forward if you need prayer for anything else if you if you if you gave your life to Jesus if you need physical healing if you need encouragement if you need freedom these people would love to pray with you um, come forward for that otherwise um, you're free to seek the Lord at the altar we'll keep the altar open and just be respectful of those who are praying and you can make your way to the lobby and have a meal afterwards. Otherwise, just be blessed and have, have an amazing afternoon.